Um, cathartic as well. <laughs> well, it, it gets results. Uh, you know, I, not to mention you know any names disparagingly, but it took me eight years to make Barnes and Noble take my books out of the romance section. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been talking to district managers, to sales staffs, and they all said the same thing. You know, it all comes down from the top. We can't change where anything is shelved. We have no no power. And so finally, I got fed up with this. I was on a book tour for Lord John on the private matter. And they were sticking it in the romance section. And I said, <laughs> well, those of you who have read the Lord John books realize you know, why that's happening to the work. And anyway, I, I got totally fed up after a week of walking into Barnes & Noble and finding the book in there. And so I walked, spent uh, an hour walking up and down on the beach, went in, I was in Half Moon Bay, went in, called my editor and said, look, I'm not setting foot in another Barnes & Noble store until you know, we get this taken care of. And so she said, okay, I'll cancel the rest of your drop-ins for this week, you know sounding a little worried. So I walked up and down for another couple of hours and finally said, I got nothing to lose. So I went home and wrote a very rude letter to Steve Riggio, who was the CEO at the time. I said, dear Mr. Riggio, yes, yes, it's okay, I'm not going to say anything. No, 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 I'm just, I'm just counting here. So just to give some sense of scale, that would be uh, my bosses, 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 bosses. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, I said, if the only person who can change anything in that store is the guy at the top, that's who I'm going to talk to. So I said, uh, dear Mr. Riggio, I said, I'm assuming that you recognize my name, since it turns up at the top of the bestseller list every time a new book comes out. I said, I'm assuming you're familiar with my books, since they take up a substantial amount of real estate in your store. And uh, I said, uh, I'm assuming that you uh, are familiar, thank you. I said, I'm assuming that uh, you're familiar also with the bookstore chain called Hastings. I said, they're not Barnes and Noble, but they're not chopped liver either. I said, I'm assuming that you don't know that Hastings sells 40% more of all my titles than you do. I said, I'm assuming you'd like to know why that is. I said, well, I'll tell you, Steve, it's because they're not putting them in the effing romance section. <laughs> later, he uh, actually called me out of the blue, and we had a you know, fairly civil conversation for about 10 minutes, and he said, well, I'll have someone look into it, and I figured, well, that's the end of that. But 24 hours later, the VP of marketing calls me, and he said, well, we looked into it, and you're right, we're moving them. Yeah. Say, fine, we read. How are we doing on the e-book? Uh, <laughs> reasonably well, I think. <laughs>
<laughs> I found myself still thinking about this the next day in church. And I said, <laughs> I said, well, you know, it doesn't really matter where you set this. You have to look up everything anyway. The important point is pick a point and get started. So I said, fine, Scotland, 18th century. So that's where I began, knowing nothing about Scotland or the 18th century, having no plot, no outline, and no characters. Nothing but the rather vague images conjured up by the notion of a man in a kilt. <laughs> it's, of course, a very powerful and compelling image. <laughs> you know, Ali mentioned uh, the Corina International Prize for Fiction, which is very exciting. I got to go to Germany to accept that, and while I was there, the German publisher had me interviewed by just everyone in the German press, from the tabloid newspapers <laughs> up to their version of Vanity Fair. And at the end of this week of you know, constant interviewing, I was just sort of wobbling back and forth and cross-eyed. But I was talking to this very nice gentleman from a literary magazine, and he said, oh, I've read all of your books. You know, they're, just, they're just tremendous. Your narrative drive is marvelous. Your characters are so three-dimensional. Your imagery is just magic. And I'm thinking, yes, yes, go on. <laughs> 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 and instead, he stopped and said, there's just this one thing I wonder. Could you explain to me? What is the appeal of a man in a kilt? Oh! <laughs> 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 